Hello, and welcome again to another Catching Up on the Couch. Today's discussion is going to be about prior authorizations, appeals for prior authorizations, and financial assistance for the year 2022. With me today is one of our star staff members, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, and we're going to keep this brief and just discuss some changes that are coming through for 2022. So anytime one of the providers wants to put you on a new medication or have you have some type of imaging, such as an x-ray or an MRI, most times that requires a prior authorization. We have a team of people here at Advanced Rheumatology that handle these prior authorizations. The problem is that with a new year coming up, if you have changed insurance, we need to know as soon as possible because a fill for December is going to go right through. But once January comes, if you try to fill that prescription under the old authorization and the old insurance, it's going to get rejected. Therefore, you won't be able to get your medication and that is something that we don't want to happen. We ask that you have patience with the providers and the staff. We have learned that most of the insurance carriers are very short-staffed. A prior authorization that normally could take between two and seven days to get an approval is now taking anywhere from 10 to 45 days. Our staff works very diligently checking on every prior authorization that we submit to any insurance company. Sometimes you might be alerted before we are of an approval or a denial. If you receive an approval, please call us as soon as possible so that we can get that e scrub to the correct pharmacy for you. If you receive a denial, please let us know that as well. Most times we are able to appeal a denial with additional information. But if your plan excludes certain medications, an appeal is not going to work. The provider is going to have to try to find an alternative drug. The appeal process used to take about 10 to 60 days. Now that's changed to 45 to 90 days. This is unacceptable as far as the providers and staff are concerned because it's withholding medication from you that could help you. So let's just talk about appeals for a moment. So Jess, you do a good bit of imaging authorizations. And right now uh, we have a staff member out on medical leave that does a lot of oral and injectable prior authorization. So you're covering for that. And we also have another person that does approvals, prior authorization approvals for infusion drugs. And we're all sharing the load of all of these authorizations. So when you get a denial on, say, a drug like um, Rinvoke. Okay. I first, I will appeal the drug if I get to the denial, as long as it's not a plan exclusion. If the patient hasn't filled the formulary alternatives that are required, then that's when I send it back to the provider so that they can choose the alternative because they are required in some cases. So we would have to start back at the beginning and follow through the formulary alternatives. Once approved by your insurance company, it will be e-scribed to the particular specialty pharmacy filling your drug. This only applies for specialty drugs, not drugs like Plaquenil, sulfasalazine or vitamin D. I'm talking about things like injectable methotrexate, Humira, Embril, Rinvoke, Illumiant, Taltz, etc. You will receive a call from your pharmacy and they will let you know if you have a copay. Most pharmacies know about the copay cards for commercial insurance only. If they tell you that you have a high copay, you want to make sure that that copay card has been applied toward your balance. They will also ask you to authorize the shipment either to your home or if it's an infusible or injectable drug that must be given in the office to give your authorization for it to be shipped to the office. If that's the case, once the drug is approved, you will be scheduled for your appointment for your infusion or your injection. Most companies have financial assistance programs. Patients with commercial or Medicare 
can take advantage of most of these programs. If you have Medicaid or TRICARE, they are excluded. On our website, under Resources, if you tick Accepted Insurances and scroll to the bottom, there are a list of foundations with the link to the web address for you to apply for assistance for drugs such as Prolia, TALTS, Enbrel, Humira, Rinvoke, Simsia, and basically all of the drugs that, that we prescribe here. Now those are foundations. The money goes very quickly on the foundation. If you're not savvy, have a loved one or even a neighbor help you try to apply online. If you are on a drug like Humira or Simsia or TALTS, on our webpage under Infusion Center, it lists all of the medications that we prescribe here in the office. If you tick on that particular medication, it takes you directly to their webpage where you can look up financial assistance. You can start the process on your own, or we can start it for you on paper. Now, just, just explain a little bit, if it is done on paper, some of the stops that okay. we find that, that hold up your process. So a lot of the stops on my process are patients who are not turning in their income information, correct insurance information, um, household sizes. I need to know all that. I don't have that information on file. So please attach that or fill in those lines and attach your income documentation. The process will not be completed until we have all papers in hand. Um, most patients find it easier to go ahead and submit it themselves, which is fine, but please notify me that you're submitting your form. That way I can turn around and submit the provider application. Other than that, that's most of it. So patients that say have UPMC okay. commercial this year that needed copay assistance for Humira. Okay. Most of the manufacturers will give you that assistance for one year. It's usually the entire calendar year. It doesn't go, if you apply in September, it doesn't go until September. It usually just goes January 1 to December 31st. If you change insurance, you will have to reapply. Everybody will need a new application who changes insurance starting January 1st. The, the calendar year ends on December 31st, but that's only for the insurance that you currently have. Now, if your insurance stays the same, certain companies will allow that to continue through the following calendar year. Um, most of them will ask you to reapply anyways just for the start of January because that's when new funds are released. Okay. So the main things are for a prior authorization to go through without any glitches. We need you to work with us. We need your insurance information and it must be correct. We need you to take the call from the pharmacy. We need you to apply for assistance and let us know you applied for assistance so that we can keep an eye out for either emails or faxes or even paper coming in by U.S. mail for the doctor's signature and the prescription. You'll see when this video is posted that there will also be a script of everything that we've discussed with the phone numbers for the foundations. If you Google these foundations, you should be able to tick right to their website and begin to apply. It's very important that you answer the call from the pharmacy. Even if it's a strange number, if you say hello and it ends up being a spam call, you can hang up. But if it's the pharmacy, they won't leave a message and they'll only reach out to you three times and then they'll consider the case closed. This can be extremely aggravating on the end of the patient because the pharmacy will say that the office never reached out to them, but if we contact the pharmacy, they'll say the patient never responded to their calls, and it causes a lot of confusion and misconception. We're here to get you the medications that you need. As your medical home, the providers treat you based on your symptoms and your disease activity with the proper medications. 
These can change from time to time. If you're new to our office and you're new to the prior authorization process, our medications are a little bit harder to get approved. It's not like getting a blood pressure pill or a, a shot of insulin. Some of these medications can only be given in our office. Most of them can be given at home by you. Some of these medications, you have the choice of whether or not you want to give yourself a shot or if you'd like to come into the office and get it. You just need to let us know. So in closing, I wanted to introduce Jess. She's a vital part of our team. We also have Cheryl that helps with our infusion team. And we also have Kathy who currently is recovering from a medical surgical procedure. If you have any questions, feel free to call the office at 724-935-9355. Jessica's extension is 109. My extension is 112. For any refill requests, the extension is 103. Please do not leave multiple messages. If it says our mailbox is full, please email us at info, I-N-F-O, at A-R-A-R-C dot net. Our phones are on from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Email is monitored Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. through 5 p.m. We answer all email requests. So, anything you'd like to say in closing, Jess? No, I think we covered all of it, actually. Okay. It can be confusing. We have a new insurance year upon us. January, February, and March are the busiest for us for reauthorizing medications and trying to get you that patient assistance that you need. Thank you again for another Catching Up on the Couch, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Remember to stay safe and stay healthy.